All right, so it's the holidays. Maybe you got a new camera. Your first instinct is the easiest mode, which is throw it in the auto, start taking pictures, and that's great. That's definitely the best way to start learning composition. But when you're ready to take it to the next level, you're gonna to wanna to start learning how to use manual mode. Now for a lot of you, myself included, manual was just a tad bit intimidating when I first started. There's all these values that I wasn't sure what to do with. Like anything, it's just a learning curve. But let's try and make it as simple as possible for y'all. And the basic values you need to know when you're first starting to learn manual mode is the exposure, also known as shutter speed, the ISO value, and the aperture number. So first we're gonna wanna go ahead and dive right into figuring out where these numbers are on your camera. Right here I have the Sony a7 IV, but these numbers should be the same for any camera that you use. So go ahead and pick up your camera, turn it on, switch the dial to the M to signify for manual, and look at your LCD screen, play around with your dials and see what numbers they adjust. The exposure slash shutter speed is gonna be identified as a whole number or a fraction, like 1 to 125th of a second, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds, etc. ISO will typically literally have the letters ISO in front of the number, and typical ranges start at 100 ISO all the way up to thousands upon tens of thousands of ISO. And the aperture number will always have an F in front of it. It's the F stop, you'll hear that a lot. Same thing, aperture, F stop. And you'll see numbers like F1.4 all the way up to F22. And just as a note from kind of experience and just looking at different lenses, most beginner lenses start at like F3.5 or F2.8. And once you've properly identified all those numbers, let's go ahead and dive right into the first setting and that is the exposure, also known as shutter speed. Please pause the video now to find those settings. So again, this is gonna probably be a little bit different depending on what camera you have. This is the Sony a7 IV and the shutter speed is controlled by this dial right here. The number right now is 1 1 25th of a second. That means it's exposed to light for 1 1 25th of a second. If I make it faster, all the way to its highest setting, which is 1 8,000th of a second, I can barely even see my subject because it's not really taking in any light. And without any light, you can't see anything. As we slow down this shutter speed, the object is gonna start becoming more and more visible. And if we have it exposed for way too long, it's gonna be blown out, the highlights are gonna be ridiculous, and you're not gonna make anything out. It's just gonna look like a white, hot mess. Now the other number that you're always gonna to wanna to keep in mind is this MM plus zero zero number. This is basically telling you if it's properly exposed. If it's at zero zero, it's perfectly exposed. But if it has a plus in front of it, it's gonna be overexposed. And if it has a minus in front of it, it's gonna be underexposed. Adjusting anything from your shutter speed, your ISO, or your aperture is going to impact that exposure. So the goal is to always try and get that to zero, zero as frequently as possible. Now there's a couple other things you need to know about your shutter speed. One of them is you're gonna start getting blurry shots if your camera's not in a tripod and you're shooting in slower shutter speeds like one second, one tenth of a second, one thirty second of a second. And the reason for that is if you're moving and your shutter is open to the light, basically what's gonna happen is as your camera moves, it's gonna take that light and move with it, causing a very blurry image. So if you're walking, running and gunning with the camera without a tripod, try and shoot 1 1 25th of a second. I really wouldn't go lower than 1 1 hundredth of a second. Optimally, 1 1 60th of a second will do just fine. If you're doing things that are fast, like sports and racing and stuff like that, try and go even higher, otherwise you can get a lot of motion blur. Another cool thing you can do with shutter speed, like this waterfall shot right here, is you can use that motion blur to your advantage to get a very unique shot. That shot was taken using one fourth of a second shutter speed. And what that did is as the water fell, it detected the motion blur in each droplet, creating a very unique and beautiful image. So now that's the basics of shutter speed and you might have some questions. Hey, I'm shooting 1 60th of a second and it's too dark. Well, that's what ISO and to a lesser extent aperture is for. ISO is going to adjust how bright or dark you want your image. The downside with ISO is the higher you go on the number, the more likely you're going to introduce noise into your image. So let me go ahead and show you an example here. I'm gonna go ahead and take an image of this pop vinyl. I'm gonna throw it into 1 800th of a second. It's a very dark image right now. So I'm gonna bump up my ISO all the way to 204,800, which is ridiculous. And I'll take a shot. And as you can see in the background on this image, there's a lot of noise, it's blurry, it's not very nice looking image. Now what your camera can handle and what technology can handle these days vary depending on what you have. So I would recommend throwing your camera into whatever setting it is to get dark. Play around with your ISO. 
increasing it, decreasing it. See when your ISO starts introducing noise into your image, because you want to avoid that if at all possible. And the last thing you need to learn about is your f-stop or aperture number. This is probably the most confusing out of all of them because the numbers are reversed. What I mean by that, if you have a small aperture number like f1.4, it means it currently has a large aperture. If you have a large aperture number like f16, it means it currently has a small aperture. When you're first learning manual, I definitely recommend just keeping all of that out of your mind for now. So for the purpose of this video and to simplify it a little bit, I'm gonna refer to as a small aperture number like f1.4 or a large aperture number like f16. Please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. I'll definitely go into more details in a later video describing the nitty gritty about aperture. So when first learning manual, there's two things you're gonna wanna know about aperture. One, the lower the number, the more light you'll get in. And two, the lower the number, the more depth of field you'll get in. The, in the very basic sense of the term, depth of field is how in focus the subject you're shooting is. So go ahead and throw an object in front of your camera. And once you have that, find the dial that adjusts your aperture and spin it back and forth. As you can see, this adjusts your exposure once again. Now, when you get to higher aperture numbers, it's gonna make it very dark. It's also gonna introduce refracting, which is gonna distort the images quite a bit. So you really wanna keep it under F11 for the best quality images. But on a really bright day where you really can't avoid it, definitely pump it up because you're gonna just destroy your image anyways. Or consider getting a variable ND filter or some sort of ND filter to block out more light. But in my opinion, the main use of aperture is creating depth of field to shine a light of focus on your subject. Now let's go ahead and throw another subject back here and focus in again with the f-stop value as low as it possibly can go. You should notice that this object that you place in the background is gonna be more blurry than the object that you're focusing on. This is what I mean by depth of field. It's creating almost like a 3D effect on the image, making your main focus point pop just that much more. Now let's go ahead and see what the opposite of that can do. Go ahead and adjust your f-stop number to be as, as high as your camera can go. This is gonna obviously make the image pretty dark, so adjust your shutter speed and your ISO properly to get it properly exposed. Focus in on your subject again, and now you're gonna start saying not only is your main subject in focus, but the background subject is a lot more in focus and not completely in focus. So in the very basic sense, that is pretty much it with manual. There's a lot more details you can go into, and I will do that in later videos, touching on each one of those subjects individually. The main thing you can do when learning manual is identify what adjusts what. On the back of your camera, recognize your exposure meter number so you know if you're properly exposed. Again, trying to get close to 0.0, .0 as possible. And really just practice, practice, practice. If you have any questions at all, anything that you can possibly need help on, just let me know now in the comments. I am pretty quick at responding. I actually love responding to comments. I would definitely love to help you learn how to shoot in manual mode. It's really not that intimidating. Really just dive right in, start practicing immediately, and let me know about your results. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I know it's been a minute since I've done long form content. That's going to change here now that I'm done with wedding photography season. If you like this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribe button down below, and I'll catch y'all in the next video.